Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day four of the April Lico Daily Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's farm. 2405 Optimal Petition of String. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Maybe I already said it. I'm being dumb dumb. Um, but maybe you should just do it again then. <laughs> Alright, let's take a look at this farm. Hope everyone's having a great week, a uh, great start of the week. I uh, hope no one got too tricked by the April Fools over the weekend. But uh, yeah, give a string S, partition the string to one or more substrings such that the characters in each substring are unique. Therefore, they, that is, no letter appear in a single substring more than once. We don't know the minimum number of substrings in a, such a partition. Okay. That sounds like a DP problem. 10 is you go to 5th is a little bit... Um, you know, uh, I think there are a couple of things here, right? It's going to be DP, or at least my, my I'm going to try to do it with DP. Um, I, I think one thing that you may, you may uh, be tempted to think about, and this is my first initial thought for half a second as well, is that if you try to do a naive DP, you know, uh, uh, shortest path in a dag or something like this, that's how... I mean, this is one reduction of this problem is to shortest path in a DAG, which is a dynamic programming problem, which you can easily do. Um, of course, that's going to be N squared if you do it right naively. The, um, especially since there are, in theory, there are um, N squared number of edges, right? The key thing to notice about this problem, and you may notice if you're a little bit, uh, you know, because uh, this, this, uh, there is some, some, uh, some stuff. Uh, I think what, uh, what do I want to say? What I want to say is that there are sometimes there are problems where you go low and you get a little bit lucky and you don't know why, but you take it. Um, there may be that kind of element for this particular problem, and what I mean by that is that um, it turns out, and you could, you know, if you implement it in a weird way but correct way, just a little bit lucky, um, you may get it right without realizing. But the observation to make about this particular problem is that um, for each character, for each node, um, you may only have to go back 26. Or you you can, like, the maximum is going over 26 characters, right? Because otherwise, by the pigeonhole principle, one of the, one of the characters will, um, will return more than once or whatever. Appear more than once. I'm um, trying to try to bring up paint in this particular uh, real quick. Um, you usually I don't think I need to describe this step, or I don't need to visualize uh, something like this. But I'm trying to try today a little bit. Try a little bit different. So looking for the pen. Um, because I think one thing that people get a little bit confused about dynamic programming, I think, um, and sometimes I I do as well, is that people. Um, and you know, if, if this is not you, you know, it's fine. Don't be offended or whatever. You know, you could kind of see uh, what Larry's thinking then, right? Um, is that I think one thing that is an easy trap to fall into for dynamic programming is that because you have this idea of an index, right? Or you have like, you know, when, when you do DP, especially if you do bottoms up, you, you keep track of indexes and stuff like this. And it's very easy to kind of mix that in with. Uh, the characters, right? And what I mean by that is, let's say you have an input that's. Uh, I'm trying to look at the, the 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 example one, but it's blocking my screen. Okay, fine. A B A C A B A, right? So something like this, right? Is your input? Um, it's very tempting that you know if you set up an array, maybe sometimes it's going to be an elevator of n elements. In this case, it's an array of seven elements. You know, you set up a cell, right? And and, you know, uh, if you look at a lot of random YouTubes, um, and sometimes they teach it this way, you know, you kind of fill out an answer and you go, okay, yeah, look, this is an edge. And then you take them in, da, 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 right? I'm not going to go over that part of here, but I think the better visualization that I want you to think about, um, and this is a tool that, I don't know if it's a tool, but this is a thing that sometimes it's a little bit clearer, is that, um, and a lot of people, a lot of the top people have this intuition about them, but they don't maybe um, make it explicit, right? And what I want to say is that the DP is actually not the characters, but the DP is the... Um, and sometimes there is an implicit implementation, but the DP is actually on the space between the characters. So actually, instead of, um, you know, the characters being the cells, um, you actually have, say... 
something like this where um, the space be between the characters is is the uh, the actual nodes, right? Um, and then here now um, another way of thinking about it, then right, is that um, and sometimes you have an implicit you know zero node or zero index, and that's why. Um, because because many times for whatever reason this is going to be zero, so sometimes people make that implicit, and then they kind of just like you know shift everything up to the left ones, and you know these things. But I think um, this, and for those of you who are very familiar with this, you know, congrats. Um, but this is a reminder for the rest of you, and sometimes myself, right? And here um, you can draw a node, uh, sorry, draw an edge between two nodes, if. Um, basically based on the constraint, which is that no letter appears in the substring more than once, right? So basically, this is uh, this is an edge, uh, this is an edge, as well as this is an edge. Um, this is an edge, and this is an edge. Oops, drew it to the A of accent, whatever. Um, C has a little bit more action, so something like this, something like this, and then something like this, right? I mean, you get the idea. Um, and then now, now that you drew this DAG, either going backwards or forward, it doesn't really matter for this particular problem. It is going to be symmetric. And then it becomes, um, as I said at the top of the, the video, um, it's going to be shortest path in the DAG, right? Which is, you know, the minimum number of substrings. Anyway, I just wanted to give that visualization a quick reminder um, because I think sometimes, or I, I think I actually explain it very often, but I think I... I'm also very often very lazy to show that visualization. So hopefully this time doing that visualization, it will help you kind of think through it, right? And as I said, um, because of the pigeonhole principles, you can only go back up 26 characters and before you find, um, uh, before you find uh, 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 a letter that, like by pigeonhole, you, you will always have a letter that appears more than once. Okay, so with all that said, let's let's get started, right? Um, so we have dp is equal to say um, infinity times um, n plus one, and this is why often you see like n plus one, and people are using n for that reason, by the way. Um, and infinity, we just said to some really big number that's as long as it's bigger than n is probably okay. Um, yeah, and then dp of zero is equal to zero, as we always do, because uh, yeah, the shortest way to get to an empty string is zero. And then yeah, and then now we we run it. Um whew. okay, so we always have a length one, I guess that makes sense, but we'll just make it in place anyway. Uh but yeah, but we'll go from is it inclusive? Yeah, okay. I minus one. Uh, my, minus one, minus one, something like that. Uh, maybe I would even write it a different way. Maybe J is equal to I minus one, and then while true or something like this, right? Um, basically, <clears throat> and here is where where that space thing uh, makes you know you have to be very careful, right? Because for the character. Um, uh, for the character i, we actually want the space uh, uh, i plus one, right? So actually, let's just set so j is equal to i, um, and then while true, um, maybe we have something like set is equal to set, right? Um, So while s oh no uh, that's also the input string so maybe scene so while uh, s of j is not in scene then we move to the left right but before we move to the left we want to connect i and yeah I, yeah we want to uh, connect that as an edge and also do a min so s of dp of um so i is the we want to con so looking at the cell i or the the character i the space to the right of i is going to be i plus one right so i plus one is equal to min of dpi plus one or 
um, the cell that is left of J is going to be J. So DP of J plus one, right? Uh, so then now we put scene dot add of s of j and then we do this. Um, we also probably have to make sure that n um, and j is greater than or equal to zero and this right. Um, and that's pretty much it, right? I think uh, uh, n minus one. No, no, no. N. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's give it some mid. Should be okay. Maybe. Hopefully, I didn't miss something silly. Yep. Uh, 1099 is the streak. Huh. The timing is slow. Maybe there's a faster way of doing it. Hmm. Uh, but still, this is going to be linear times the size of the alphabet. In this case, it's going to be O of A times N, where A is the size of the alphabet, which of course is 26 for the number of characters, um, and 10 to the fifth. Um, yeah. I think one optimization that you can make is a sort of a, you know, um, which, um, hmm, I don't know if that's true actually, because I think maybe you could skip ahead. Never mind. Well, um, uh, I know this, I'm thinking of an optimization with like segment tree or something like this, but I feel like that might not actually save me that much time. Um, but, for those of you who are advanced and you want, uh, I think there is a segment tree solution that makes it from O of alpha times n into O of n times log of alpha, maybe? Maybe log n, but, but maybe, maybe n log n, but, which maybe could be bigger, but, um, but then, Huh. Hmm. I'm trying to think. Um, the idea behind that is that I think you can actually even do well. No. Mm, yeah, I guess there's another solution that doesn't even require segment tree. It requires, um, what's it called? Monotonically, like a mono queue. I forget which which way this is because I'm not thinking about it that much. But I think there's a solution with mono queue. Um, the idea here is that, um, is that if you look at, uh, and I'm not going to implement this, but it's, uh, maybe you could do it as an extra credit. Ooh, what did I do? Uh, you can do it as an extra credit. Is let's say you have some kind of string like this, right? Maybe just a long string. Then the idea is that um, there is a sort of sliding window in which, uh, for example, this A, uh, mm, basically there's a sliding window, right? So B can do, we'll, we'll look at this part. Um, the the A will look at this part. I mean, I don't know if I'm gonna. Say, this is maybe a really poor visualization uh, string because this has too many dupe things. But but basically, there's gonna be a sliding window. You can keep track of the the farthest to the left, and then as you kind of process one, you can slide it to the right and then pop it out. And then all you have to do in is that you keep track of the min of of the mono mono queue. Um, you keep tr you know there's a mono queue where you keep track of the min element, um, and if you keep track of the min min element of the mono queue, then you could do this DP in all of one time, uh, and then also keeping state with all this scene stuff by manipulating the the pointers and stuff. And in that case, um, you can get it down to just O of n with no alpha um, consideration. Um, yeah, like a sliding window of mono queue. Uh, DP, which is way, uh, it used to be a very advanced concept, but nowadays I feel like I've seen it a few times, so maybe it's not as advanced as it used to be, but definitely is a thing. So, uh, hmm. so yeah. I also wonder if there's a greedy. <laughs> Maybe that's why my thing is so slow. <laughs> now that I think about it, uh, hmm. huh? 
Huh. Maybe that is embarrassing then. Now that we're 15 minutes in, I'm realizing that there's a greedy. I think the hardest part about greedy is proving it is correct. Um... I guess the idea behind greedy, right, is that is that let's say you have some X is other characters, not this, right? Uh, not, but let's say you have these two A's, right? And X can be anything, so they're not dupes. Okay, fine. Let's just do B C D E B uh, F G H, right? The idea is that okay, given we know that these two A's have to be in different substrings, right? And then the question is, given these strings, uh, or these characters in the middle, um, does it make sense for them to go to the left or to the right, right? Um, assume, and in the greedy sense, you always want to put as much left as possible, um, because then it, that can only, that can only give you a better result because there may be an F in the future. So in, that may be an argument for greedy, but I'm really bad at it clearly because I did all this thing with DP just to, you know, I'm, now that I think about it, it's a little bit sad. But all right, let, let's try again, but with um, with greedy, right? Um, eh, okay, fine, right? So, okay. So for C is an S, uh, scene is equal to set, count is equal to zero, something like that, right? Um, yeah, if C is in scene, uh, scene is to go to set, scene dot add C, count increment by one, right? Uh, I guess we start with one, and is there an empty string possible? No. Um, continue, otherwise, C, uh, scene dot add C, right? And then just return count. Hmm. Is that good enough? Uh, I guess greedy is the way to do it. Huh. How did I do it the first time? I guess the first time I did it was with greedy. Hmm. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, th these greedy problems are hard. Uh, I, I think one of the most common questions I get is how do I prove greedy? And how do I know greedy is correct? Um, and this is your, maybe this is your answer. I'm not that good at greedy. Um, and honestly, the proof is the hardest part. Um, and any chance I can with dynamic programming, apparently I take. Uh, this one, I thought that it would, I mean, it would be fast enough because um, 26 times 10 to the fifth, it should be fast enough. So uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. Hope this helps you in the sense that knowing that, you know, I am really bad at greedy. So, <laughs> uh, but that's all I have for today. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know what you have in the comments and yeah. You could, uh, I don't know what to say. But yes, stay good, stay healthy, to good mental health. Have a great rest of the week. I'll see you later and take care. Bye-bye.